You are amazing. I oh love goodness. I love your outfit. And who's Thank this? You. This is Dee Dee. If you look closely, he's in a scene in the movie. Oh, really? Yes, he's in the background. Now I have to watch it again. <laughs> but I don't mind watching it again because it was fantastic. Thank now, did you. you dress him in for, up for the show, or is he um, always dressed like this? No, he's not always dressed like that. He just didn't want to go without his tuxedo because he felt very exposed. I see. I understand. <laughs> Wow, well, yes. he's adorable, and thanks for bringing him. Um, you are something else. You really you. are amazing. I couldn't, I couldn't get over how, and I, I don't <laughs> know, I, I haven't seen you in anything else, I don't think, but now I can see your work all Thank the time. Thank you so much. I watch your show all the time. And Dee Dee's so excited to be here because he, um, he loves Twitch, and he loves you, and he loves Andy. And me and him always like to watch the show whenever we can. And it's so amazing to be here because you're my role model and I look up to you. No, oh, wow. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Do you love Twitch and you love to dance? Yes, I do love dance. Yeah. Do you and take dance class? Um, no, I don't. No. You know, he took tap. He knows how to yes, tap dance. Yes, I do know that. He did promise me he would dance a tap dance for me some. Oh, really? But... Maybe today is the day. Why don't you tap oh, dance for everybody? Oh, <laughs> Please, but I won't make you if you don't want to. But it <laughs> no, would be so amazing. Sweet. No, if you don't. But it's too amazing. late. The yeah. audience is on board. All right. No, uh, but you should because yeah, she's asking you. Yeah, I can do a little you. soft. Okay. I'll do a little soft. Let's oh, see yeah. it. Oh, right now? Yeah. Oh, this minute. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Oh, that's that's. Can you charming. hear it? You yeah. can't hear the We tap. can hear it. They were good. They were they were clean. That was really good. <laughs> if, if you, could you hear it? Yeah. All right. All right. Well, that's all you get. All right. Well, that was enough. That was a, a little goes a long way with you. Um, and I mean that in a good way. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> that's I mean not that what you want to hear. In the best way possible. Usually. And uh, was it fun working with this guy here? Yes, it was so much fun. We were always singing and dancing and. He's so nice. He has such a kind heart, and he's always doing <laughs> charity. And I pay her. It's yeah. not a big deal. You still uh, have to pay me for the swear jar. I do have to pay. We had yeah, a swear still jar. Pay up. On set, you know, if you say a bad word, you got to put five bucks in the swear jar. And, Unless uh, it's the F word, you have to give ten dollars. F word is ten, yeah. ten bucks. Wow. And uh, how? And who gets the money? Uh, I do, charity. and I give it to charity. Oh, good. And Although I kept like five dollars. Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> After a career-ending injury ruined his hopes for playing in the NFL, our next guest spent two years broke and living on his sister's couch. What happened next is unbelievable. Within a few years, he was making millions of dollars and helping others achieve their dreams through his book and podcast, The School of Greatness. Please welcome Lewis House. Before we get started, I want people to understand your situation and who you are. At 33, you have built and sold several multi-million dollar online businesses. Your podcast, The School of Greatness, was named one of the top podcasts in the world with over 30 million downloads. Details Magazine called you one of the five internet gurus who can make you rich. And President Obama named you one of the top entrepreneurs in the country. Mm. Pretty impressive for a guy who was on his sister's couch. Thank you. Thank you. So, so this is this is hopeful for anybody, and that's why you're so amazing because you're not just somebody talking about something. You actually lived it. So, right. how did you get off of your sister's couch? Well, I think first off. I have to tell how I got on there first. Okay. You know, as a kid, I always dreamed about being an all-American athlete. I would watch football with my dad on TV when I was about five, six years old, and he would always talk about the all-Americans. So being a good son, I wanted to do what my dad talked about, and that was being an all-American athlete. So I, I committed my entire life to being a great athlete. I wasn't that good in school, and I put all that energy into sports. After playing college football and, and doing the decathlon, I went to try to make the NFL. I never made it. I was never good enough, Alan, but I made it to play arena football. And it's about a step below uh, the NFL. And for me, I, I played a couple of games and got injured really quickly. I broke my wrist. You can see right here, I have a scar right there. And I was in a cast for about six months. In this position, in a cast for six months. And we only got paid $250 a week playing arena football. So it wasn't like I was rolling in the dollars here. And we got food stamps for food on the weekends. So for me, there wasn't really much money left over after I got injured playing arena football. And that's how I got on my sister's couch. OK, so you're on your sister's couch yes. for how long? A year and a half. A year and a half. No money coming in, no job. This was back in 2008, 2009 when the economy was pretty bad. 
And I didn't have a college degree because I left early to go try to make the NFL. Right. And um, so I didn't have a degree, didn't really have any skills, didn't have any money, was in college debt, and I was just trying to figure out what I was going to do next. My identity was shattered. Right. So then you started this podcast. I mean, we're jumping a lot yes. because there's a lot in between, but people need to read the book. They can find yes. out. So you started this uh, podcast, School of Greatness, which yes. I love the title. Thank you. And uh, talk about that. You know, after I had kind of, I finally started to make some money on my own and reached out to mentors after I was on my sister's couch for a while to, to start building a business, I sold that business and I realized that I want to make an impact in the world. I want to connect with people. I want to do what you do and give back to the world. You have such an incredible, incredible platform and you give to so many people, your audience, the people watching at home. And I said, I want to create the show and the tools and the information that I wish I would have learned growing up. The school of greatness. I wish this is what I would have learned growing up as opposed to what they taught me in school. So you are saying, basically, and, and I agree with you, uh, to, uh, I mean, some people need to go to school for whatever they're mm -hmm. going to be if, if you need a degree to do that. Absolutely. But if you're someone who isn't good at school and, uh, and does, doesn't like school, which is, I, I didn't really love school, I didn't have great teachers. I think teachers are so important, and if teachers keep you interested, then, then school is, is great. Yeah. But if you don't have teachers that are, that are you know, motivating you, yep. so, so how do you get rich without, without going to school? I think you gotta have a dream first. You know, for me, it always starts with a dream because I can get, I can go through any adversity when I have a dream, something I'm passionate about. When I'm not excited about something, then I wanna give up or I, I don't wanna do it. Yeah. I wanna go back to thinking about my dream. Right. And so I think first we have to figure out what is our dream and go on a journey and a path to achieving that. And you know, years ago, I was telling Scooter, our mutual friend backstage years ago, when I didn't have much, I remember watching this show and seeing people dance, and I literally envisioned in my head hip bumping you dancing on this stage. And we did it. We did it. Wow. We did yeah. it. Yeah. That's, um, I, listen, I, there are many examples of, of that kind of, you know, believing it and achieving it, and I am one of those people that believe that. I think that you have to really, your thoughts create actions. Absolutely. And uh, I know you, you had Twitch on your podcast, which yes. is, and he's an inspiration because, and he's an example of someone who loves what he does, and mm -hmm. this is his dream, and I think that's the most important thing. Yeah, the thing I love about Twitch um, is that he chased his dream living in the South as a straight man, mm -hmm to pursue dance. That was not really looked as like uh, a cool thing to do when right. a lot of people are playing football and other sports. And he said, you know what, I'm gonna do this anyways because this is what I love. Right. And I'm gonna find a team of people that support me. I'm gonna enroll my family, my, my, uh, my brothers, my, my teammates, everyone else to help me get to where I wanna be. And he came here and he's making his dreams come true. I know, it's amazing. It's so he was a straight man uh, in the South dancing, I was a gay woman in the South trying to be a comedian. Yep. Both were not easy. <laughs> Both were, you know, <laughs> really tough. We're back with Lewis Howes, who hosts the podcast, The School of Greatness. And um, so you, you say you put your mind to something and then you can achieve it. And something you were interested in doing was uh, salsa dancing. Yes. So you just decided I'm going to, which seems very hard. It's for a white guy, yes. Yes. It's challenging. And I used to live uh, in Columbus, Ohio. I'm from Ohio. I used to live in a jazz club uh, upstairs in a one-bedroom apartment. And I would go downstairs, and every week there would be live salsa band. This is me with Julianne Huff uh, from Dancing with the Stars, who I think you know, right? Yes. Yeah. And every week I would go to, and that's uh, Twitch's wife, actually, who I was dancing with. Sorry, Twitch. Oh, good. And every week I would go downstairs and watch this live salsa band, and all the salseros in Columbus, Ohio would come out. And I would be the sore thumb sticking out, this tall white guy in a sea of, you know, short Latin guys. But they were, looked amazing, spinning these women around. It was so beautiful, the art of salsa. Yeah. I finally got the courage to, to do it, and... I was hooked. I would watch YouTube videos every single night. I would go out all the time on the town and salsa dance. And in a few months, I finally felt like I picked it up to where I was fluent in the language of salsa. Fantastic. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's really fun. And I think you have to keep, and you talk about this, growing and challenging yourself. Because when you get to a place that you've accomplished something, it's really important to, to spread out and do different things and challenge Constantly yourself. Constantly grow. Yeah. If we're not growing, we're slowly going down. Yep, I agree. OK, so you have, uh, you're able to help people achieve their dreams. So here's my idea. If you're yes. watching this show and you think that Lewis can help you, 
go to my website, tell us your story, and uh, you can do download uh, Lewis's podcast, School of Greatness, and on iTunes, so you can kind of get a feel for what he does. But literally, if you think he can help you, if you're struggling with something, go to our website and let us know.